Essendon GM of football. His name's Josh Marnie, and it's true, one of the good men of football. Um, Marns, thanks for your time. No worries, Kane. Thanks for having me, mate. Um, you're under the pump. C- can I can I start there? It's probably a, a situation you may not have faced. Well, you're pro- it's probably wrong. You've probably faced similar situations when you're at Melbourne, but... Professionally, how do you handle it when it feels like everyone's coming for your footy club, and 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 probably rightly so, to be fair. Yeah, that's right. Um, unfortunately, I'm experienced in this area, Kane, and I did go through a lot of it at Melbourne. Um, so it's probably not an area you want to be experienced in. But um, you know, the good situation is I know that this is what clubs go through, and clubs that go through this period, there's things that you you have to do, and the thing first thing you can't do is put your head in the sand and say nothing's wrong here, because we're not expect you know we're not going anywhere near our expectations at this day. So we've got to keep looking at our program, keep looking at our players, keep looking at everything we're doing and saying, you know, what can we what can we change, what can we uh, tweak with to get us back on track? So that's what we've been doing. Um, with some, some little signs in different stages, but it just hasn't all clicked at, at the moment. But, um, you yeah, know, that's what we have to do as a, as a group and internally and stay together, keep questioning each other, keep challenging each other and, and you know, control what we can control. Mm. Well, I sort of reflected on you know your own experiences, and it just felt like absolute rock bottom at Port Adelaide for a period there, where it was just one blow after another. Now, I'm not for any minute suggesting Essendon's a similar point as what Port Adelaide was, but you forget that it can turn around, and you're probably the perfect person to explain that with what has happened at Melbourne and how almost instantly they've been able to turn it around. How much do you draw on that experience? Yeah, you do. And I think throughout your, your football career and your your off field career, you're always drawing back on different experiences and. There's a number of times I'm reflected on different stages of development of what we went through at Melbourne. And one of the big ones was, was the poor year we had in 2019 when after 2018 making the prelim final, 2019, nothing worked. And we're down the bottom of the ladder. We had a lot of injuries and what we just got together, we said, we're going to maximise this opportunity. And we maximised the opportunity. We went to the draft, brought in some great young talent. And then, you know, the change happened pretty quickly, you know, not long after that. So whatever situation you're in, you have to maximise it. And, you know, we're in a situation now, let's, as an example, we've got the mid-season draft that we've all of a sudden got pick three, which at the start of the year we wouldn't have thought about that we have that sort of pick. So we've got to maximise that pick and keep looking for those opportunities throughout the year to, to keep getting better. Well, George, just on the mid-season draft, uh, is, is there good enough talent out there that uh, having pick three in the mid-season draft will make a, a big difference? Oh, there is good enough talent for sure. Um, I think we're still seeing a bit of a hangover from the COVID years for, for young players. Mm. Um, there's a lot of players that didn't play, make, play much footy at all as 17 and 18 year olds, and now they're back in. They've probably played half a year or a little bit of last year as well. So some guys that were really highly rated as 17 year olds and just missed two years of footy are now back playing. So there is, um, you know, those type of players there. And you know, at the moment we've got one pick at, at pick three, and we certainly think there's there's talent there that. Not saying that that person is going to come in and make the difference for what we're doing at the moment, but certainly be someone that we can add to our list and, and make us better. Was I mean, you were criticised for that thirty tackle performance against Sydney, and it just sort of blew up on the on the back of some media commentary, Marns. And then there was definitely a physical response. Was it a bit was it a bit fake or not? Was it was it more natural? Can you take me inside the the week that you had post the Sydney game, and then the response that you showed on Saturday night? Yeah, we done 30 tackles in a game against Sydney at the SCG. You should get criticised for. Mm. So we certainly own that one. Um, the response that we was to be more physical around the contest and to you know to lay some good tackles. I thought we had a good response in, in most of those areas. Um, still missing a fair few too many tackles for our liking, and you know it's not something that changes overnight. So it's an intent thing, but a technique thing as well. And uh, we're happy with the intent, but still some work we need to do on our tackling overall. Um, you know, Mason Redmond's missing this week. Um, because he's of a, a strike, um, I'd say that was a bit of a just a reaction to what happened in the game. I don't think that was an intense thing at all. That, yeah. You know, we're going to be more physical. That was just a, you know trying to stop a block at a forward stoppage. But apart from that, I think he was an example. Of, he laid some crunching tackles through the middle of the ground, as did other players. So, as you know, it's an important part of the game. If you don't get that part of it right, um, nothing else flows off that. So, you know, for us, you know, getting our contest work right, getting our tackling right is is step number one. How do you support the coach at times like this? I mean, it's easy to say, yeah, we're supporting Ben and he's our guy, and, and I genuinely believe you on that. But what does it look like week to week and day to day? It's to help a young coach go through a period that he hasn't been through before. Mm. I mean, if you look at last year, we did start the season similarly. Um, you know, it was, we were still 2-5 and five at the start of the year. So there were some challenges, different challenges there. And then we, yeah, back half of the year, we performed really strongly and, and snuck into the finals. 
that this experience right now is something that a new coach is um, going through. So it's an important role that I play as a support for him, an important role that the CEO plays and the board plays, important role that we're able to have conversations, that he's got a coaching panel around him that keep challenging, keep asking questions, and very important for a young coach to be open-minded. And you know that's the signs that I'm looking for in a, in a young coach coming through is, what is he doing during this period? Is he locking himself in his office and not talking to anyone or is he actually getting out and talking and looking for answers? And the positive is that's what Ben's doing at the moment. In terms of your players as well, Josh, is, is this an opportunity to, I suppose, really see some character shine through from a lot of these players where they've really been tested with some scrutiny that they might not have uh, experienced in their professional lives? Yeah, there is, there's always opportunities for that. Um, you know, we're seeing different signs in a number of different players. There's, we've got some young leaders that are being challenged in different ways. We've got some other guys trying to play some different roles for us with you know, some unavailability of, of some you know regular players. And then we've got some young players coming in that, as well, they're experiencing AFL footy for the first time and then they're copping the scrutiny as well. So it is good to just walk around the footy department and not only for players, but just looking at staff and looking at their faces and how they're walking in, what's their energy look like. Um, are they up for the fight? Are they you know, putting the white flag up? So they're all the good signs that you, you look for um, during these times. and It does tell you a lot about someone's character, um, you know, that's, which is a real positive. We've been speaking a little bit about list management this morning, just on the back of the, the changes that North Melbourne have made and perhaps some media criticism from me leading to, to one person standing down. We've also mentioned Adrian Dodoro and, and Essendon's list many times before because he's been there for so long and the lack of success in finals. How do you assess your list and is it fair to be critical of list managers at footy clubs, Marns, in your view? Oh, I think there's, there's so many things that relate to list management. Um, you know, list management, the connection to development, connection to, to coaching. Mm, mm. So they're all separate things. You've got to select the right player, select the right player at the right pick, the right player for the right role, um, and have a good development plan in place. So all those different parts are so connected and it's been a, a focus of mine coming to, to Essendon is to look at how that's all connected. Um, so our list at the moment is at, at a development stage. You know, we lost some key players uh, just before I joined in Danaher, uh, Fantasia and Saad left, you know, experienced guys that were in the prime of their career and they were replaced with six, seven, eight and, and nine, which sounds great, but the reality is we're bringing in three young blokes to replace some mature age guys. So, you know, our, our list is developing. Um, Really excited by the opportunity we do have, though. I think last year we were quiet during the trade period deliberately. Um, mm-hmm. We wanted to still look at our, our young list and see what we've got available to us. But this year we've got you know, the opportunity with the, the gap we've got in our salary cap. We've got the opportunity with some picks at the moment. Um, but you know, we think we're going to be uh, um, pretty active in this, this trade period and along with the development of our players that you know, we can rebound uh, quite quickly. Just, just on one of your players, like from a positive point of view, Nick Martin looks looks phenomenal and he's picked up after every draft after rookie list and you sort of get him after everyone's overlooked him who's responsible for that man it must be one individual that's gone i reckon this guy can play and he's been a revelation yeah it was um it was was adrian and robbie force tonight in our in our recruiting team just kept asking the question about him and we invited him over to train and and really even the type of player we thought he was he was he was more playing as a as a genuine forward in the waffle, he came over and he'd done done some work pre joining us, and he got himself super fit. And all of a sudden, now he's been able to be up the ground a lot more. His decision making, uh, the way he uses the ball, is, has been you know outstanding, really. So yeah. now he's been a great find, along with you know, Semi Durham, who was yeah. a mid season pick as well. Uh, we're able to add Tex Wanganine in the, the pre season as well. So there's been some some good finds there um, you know, as, as well in, in these different areas. A big game against Port Adelaide on Sunday at Adelaide Oval. How have you assessed the form of the power? Yeah, well, after a, a slow start, you know, their last you know, five weeks you know, to win four games, uh, they've obviously been, been able to get things back on track. You know, it's such an important game around the contest, as I've spoken about. It's a perfect game for us because um, you know, Port Adelaide bring a lot of heat around the ball when they're at their best, so we know we've got to match them and beat them in that area, and that's going to go a long way to winning the contest, but They've got some players back now. I know they've got um, some really good performance in the sample, so they're going to have a lot of players to choose from. So we've got to wait and see what their team looks like. But starting to gather a bit of momentum, albeit you know a, a tough game against Geelong last week. Bit of an inside joke here, Mars, but before a lot of games, I'd ask you, are you going to wear screw-ins or moulded boots? And now not many players wear the screw-in version. I'm looking outside here in Adelaide out of our studio and it's pelting down with rain. So 
do players mm-hmm. own screw-ins anymore? Because you might need to tell them to pack some. <laughs> no, they don't. And <laughs> always my answer was, uh, I'll wear screw-ins yes, every game. Every game. It saves you, if it saves you once, once a game, it's a good game. Oh, <laughs> when you're a struggling player and all you need to do is try and keep your feet every now and again, it was, it was worthwhile. Oh. Um, no, there's no screw-ins anyway, mate. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got my youngest daughter now plays footy, my son plays footy, and we go boot shopping, and they can't even get a chance to buy screw-ins. So maybe some long moulds is yeah. what they're going to be running, running with. All right. Well, crazy stuff. Marns, uh, good luck. Well, not good luck against our Port Adelaide side, but good luck for the rest of you. I always appreciate you fronting up, mate. It's uh, We respect that you do that. No worries, guys. Thanks, Josh Marnie mate. from the Essendon Football Club speaking honestly about the, the, the inner workings of a footy club, which fascinate me when you're under the pump, and we've sort of spoken about it a lot. A couple of good decisions here and there, a couple of good recruitments, um, some good selections in the draft, and some um, shrewd appointments can turn things around pretty quickly. But the Bombers have been a disappointment, and they're not hiding away from that fact this year.